Talix valgus. Causes, symptoms, treatment. In a properly working foot, the loads are transferred to the first and fifth metatarsal bones and the heel. And the hallux valgus is held back by the ligaments and navicular apparatus. Unfortunately, as a result of various factors, deformation occurs. As a result of which the head of the first metatarsal bone rotates inwards, which is associated with pain, difficulty walking, and many other unpleasant ailments. What is hallux valgus? What are its causes and symptoms? How is it treated? According to the definition of the International Classification of Diseases ICD-10, Hallux valgus, more widely known as Bunyan, is a disease of the musculoskeletal system and connective tissue, involving bursitis of the first metatarsophalangeal joint. Bunions have a specific appearance. They reveal themselves as a prominence in the area of the big toe on the medial side of the foot. Unfortunately, aesthetic issues are not the only problem that people with hallux valgus have to deal with. This disease can cause pain and disturb the biomechanics of the foot, and if left untreated, contribute to the occurrence of edema and degenerative changes in other joints. What can be the causes of hallucinations? The deformity may be a consequence of genetic predisposition. And more precisely, insufficient capsular ligamentous stabilization and hypertrophy of the big toe relative to the second toe. However, the wearing of uncomfortable high-heeled shoes with narrow toes is believed to be the main cause of degeneration, which explains why the problem is more common in women. Incorrectly selected footwear forces the toe to lateral deviation, which results in a change in the position of the other toes, the toe ceases to be arranged in the correct axis, moreover, a bony growth forms on the inner edge of the foot. Shoes with high heels and narrow toes also transfer the body load to the front part of the foot, which causes the transverse arch of the foot to lower and transverse flat feet occur. In addition to those mentioned, the following are also responsible for the problem of bunions. Increased tension in the Achilles tendon. Past injuries of the metatarsophalangeal joint. Diseases e.g. rheumatoid arthritis gout. Generalized joint laxity. Abnormal movement habits. Secondary neurological defects. Such as muscle contractures and paresis. Peroneus longus weakness. Patients struggling with toe valgus complain of pain, tenderness to the touch, swelling, limited mobility of the fingers, inability to climb on the toes, numbness, recurrent inflammation of the soft tissues, feeling of pressure in the forefoot due to nerve conduction disorders, impaired gait and feeling of stiff fingers. People suffering from bunions also have problems with putting on shoes, especially if they are narrow. All because the foot is compressed due to the conflict between the shoe and soft tissue. Valgus is visible to the naked eye. 
The deformation causes the toes to rotate towards the second toe and is the cause of inflammation, which is responsible for the occurrence of pain. In addition, the forefoot is noticeably widened. It is worth remembering that in order to diagnose this degeneration and establish a treatment plan, it is necessary to visit an orthopedist. The methods of treatment of hallux valgus can be divided into conservative and surgical. The doctor decides which form of therapy will be the most appropriate after conducting the interview and performing the appropriate tests. Much also depends on the age of the patient and the presence of other diseases. Among the non-invasive methods of fighting bunions, there are physiotherapeutic methods, e.g. manual therapy. Physiotherapy, the use of medical tapes, kinesotherapy and massage, and the use of corrective products, e.g. active braces, splints and interdigital wedges. Wearing properly selected orthopedic insoles is very important in preventing the progression of the disease. Several techniques are used in surgical treatment, the most important of which are exostectomy, osteotomy, arthroplasty with resection, arthrodesis and repair of tendons and ligaments of the big toe. All of them are aimed at correcting the angle of deformation reducing pain and restoring the correct position of the joint. The first step you should take to minimize the risk of hallux valgus is to choose comfortable and well-fitting footwear. Shoes should be the right size and fit properly on the heel, so that it can only slip slightly. It is worth remembering that the feet are not the same length. So you should buy shoes that match the size of the longer one. Footwear should not slip off the foot in order to avoid holding it with your fingers and additional overloading of the joint. The most comfortable are usually sports shoes, or low-heeled pumps. In the prevention of hallux valgus, a very important role is played by taking care of regular physical activity, which should also include toe exercises. It is also extremely important to follow the rules of healthy eating and not to overweight. Autism-related mutation reversed with gene therapy. Scientists have used brain organoids, miniature versions of brains grown from stem cells, to determine how a genetic mutation associated with severe form of autism interferes with neurodevelopment. Moreover, thanks to the use of gene therapy, they were able to restore normal gene function, suggesting new treatment options. Some neurological diseases, including autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and schizophrenia, have been linked in previous studies to mutations in transcription factor 4, TCF4, which is essential for brain development. Transcription factors are proteins that regulate the turning on and turning off of individual genes, so their presence or absence can have a domino effect in a developing organism. Despite numerous studies, little has been known about what happens to the brain when mutations occur in TCF4. In new research, researchers at the University of California San Diego School of Medicine used human brain organoids to determine how a genetic mutation in TCF4 interferes with brain development. The description of the work was published in the journal Nature Communications. Organoids are miniature versions of various organs grown from stem cells that retain the key anatomical features. These small, three-dimensional models are invaluable aids in research where the use of living brains is impossible or unethical. Organoids provide scientists with a living organ to test different concepts. This includes, for example, testing reactions to drugs or observing development in unfavorable conditions. Research on organoids gives scientists the opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of organs and understand the causes of many diseases.
It was on such mini-organs that California researchers checked what happens in the brain when mutations in TCF4 occur. These organoids came from skin cells taken from children with Pitt-Hopkins syndrome. Using stem cell technology, researchers transform patients' skin cells into induced pluripotent stem cells, IPSCs, which they then differentiated into three-dimensional brain organoids. Pitt-Hopkins syndrome is a rare genetic disorder characterized by developmental delay, cognitive difficulties and epilepsy. Children with this disease have profound cognitive and motor disabilities and are usually unable to communicate with the world. Pitt-Hopkins syndrome is sometimes classified as ASD due to its severe impact on motor skills and sensory integration. It is a complex condition that varies in severity. The resulting mini-brains had a mutation in TCF4, which allowed the researchers to understand how the brain develops when this mutation occurs, and to identify possible options for improving this process, that is, reversing the effects of the mutation. Preliminary observations of the organoids revealed a plethora of structural and functional differences between TCF4 mutant mini-brains and control organoids. Even without a microscope, it was possible to tell which brain organoid had the mutation, said senior study author Alison R. Muotri, a professor at the UC San Diego School of Medicine. The TCF4 mutant organoids were much smaller than normal organoids, and many of their cells were not actually neurons but precursors to neurons. These cells are meant to multiply and then mature into specialized brain cells, but in TCF4 mutant mini-brains, some part of that process has gone wrong. A series of experiments revealed that the TCF4 mutation further disrupted two important signaling pathways, WNT and SOX, that allow cells to multiply, mature into neurons and migrate to their proper location in the brain. For this reason, fewer neurons were formed during development and those cells that developed into neurons were less active than normal and often remained clustered together rather than arranged in finely tuned neural circuits.